Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. One of the biggest highlights of the Studio One 6.5 update, in my opinion, was the update to OpenAir 2, which is the convolution reverb inside of Studio One that can really compete even with the biggest names out there. And at first glance, it seems that we just added a couple of impulse responses for OpenAir 2 so that people can use it now with Dolby Atmos or in their immersive audio or surround audio productions. But actually, these also translate really well back into stereo it sounds super premium, so I'd like to show you a couple of examples of that today, how I used it in my production so far, and also how to install all of this extra content. And this we should probably address first. How do you install this extra content to get this amazing reverb quality at no extra cost? And to install it, you just go up here where it says Studio One in the menu bar, and then you go to Studio One installation. And here you should find under available downloads, it's currently listed as installed content in my case because I already have it, the Studio One 3D impulse responses, which also contains an entire preset library of open air too. So to install that you would need to have either Studio One Professional or Studio One Plus. If you do have that then you just tick the checkbox right here and you install it and you'll be able to use this amazing reverb in all of your productions from now on. So once that's installed, you go to the browser here in Studio One. You can open that up by clicking here and you go to the effect section and you should find the open air reverb. If you don't see it, just scroll down a little bit. And um, if you don't see these thumbnails, you can click on this button here. I've got asked about that several times in a couple of videos. So I wanted to mention that and um, yeah. It's as easy as dragging it here from the browser onto any channel, either here on the insert section to add it as any usual effect, or in case of reverbs and similar effects, I would actually recommend you to throw it onto the send instead. The advantage of adding it as a send channel is that you're adding a new channel to your mixer console where the open air is applied at 100% wet. And this allows you to process the reverb differently than the original instrument. Because for example, you might want to have some compression on your original sound, but you don't also want to compress the reverb because then the tail would sound unnatural. Or in some reverbs that don't feature an EQ like the open air does, you might want to cut out the low end of your reverb without also cutting into the low end of the original instrument. That's just a side note. I have an entire video covering all of the differences between insights and sense. You can check that out here in the top corner. And once you've opened it up, you can see that we have this beautiful new interface here when you select a couple of the new presets, which are now in this folder 3D IR for impulse responses. And it features a variety of different rooms all the way from chambers to spaces that are absolutely huge and even mystical like ancient forest or massive cave. Parking garage is another favorite of mine. And I might have said that before and I'm a little bit biased perhaps, but I really find just from the sonic quality that this reverb plugin can rival even more commercial reverb plugins that often cost more than Studio One itself. So it's really remarkable what the team has done here. And I want to show you just a couple of sound examples so you can get a better picture. So in my first example here, I have applied the open air as a drum reverb to give a bit of life to these percussions, which do sound a little bit dry on their own. Have a listen. Right now, open air is on bypass. It's applied here as a scent on the percussion. You can open that with a double click. And let me just put it out of bypass for an AB comparison. Of course, I can adjust the intensity of the reverb here with this scent level fader. And then we can bypass again for AB comparison. This is dry. And this is with the open air applied. And this is meant to be like a shorter reverb 
but I find that it gives an amazing amount of punch and ambience to these otherwise fairly dry and boring percussions. I was really impressed by it. Then I have a synth arrangement here that is just consisting of a couple of high quality instruments, but without any reverb, it just doesn't come to life. Right, especially this little whistle sound sounds a little bit lost and not as mystic and haunting as I would like it to sound. And that's where open air really comes to shine. And for this application, I've used one of the more massive cave spaces that are available inside of open air. In this case, it's tunnel, the preset, and it has like a size of up to eight seconds, which uh, is quite remarkable. So let's see what that would sound like. This is without open air. And now let's turn it on. And this is much closer to what I had in mind, actually. And yeah, even though this is originally, as you can see, a 7.1.4 impulse response, which is meant to be used for surround sound and Dolby Atmos applications, you can still hear that it sounds great even when folded into stereo. And you also have a lot of parameters here to adjust the impulse response to your liking. In fact, you can even import your own impulse responses into open air by using our impulse response maker plugin. That's also a free edition that you have inside of Studio One. So you also find that here in the effects section. And this allows you to even create your own 9.1.6 impulse responses, which is something that's just mind blowing to me. So if you're a sound designer and you're interested in making your own impulse responses, you have to try out the IR maker. And in my third and final example today to showcase the new Open Air 2, I have applied a trick that I've shown in another video of mine. If you're an avid follower of my playlist, thank you, by the way, you might have seen the ducking reverb and delay video. I'm going to link that here in the top corner if you're not aware. And this is basically allowing me to put a massive reverb on a vocal performance without mudding up the articulation or messing with the overall clarity of it. And that's achieved by ducking the reverb with a compressor that's set to sidechain here on the reverb effects channel. And the sidechain is coming in from the vocal. So every time the vocal comes in, the compressor reacts and ducks down the reverb channel. So the vocal is reducing the volume of the reverb. But as soon as the vocal stops, then the reverb regains its original loudness. And that creates this magic effect that I like to describe as a vocal throw. So let's take a listen. Let's see what this sounds like together. Now that I'm here, please don't push me away Just tell me your wishes Cool, right? So as indicated by that gain reduction line, this yellow line here in the compressor, we ducked down the reverb by like 15 decibels or so. And only when the performance stopped, that's when the reverb regained 15 decibels of loudness, which creates a super obvious artistic effect that I especially enjoy with high quality impulse responses, such as those that we now have available in open air. So there you have it. That's a closer look at the brand new reverb inside of Studio One Open Air 2, available now as a free addition to your Studio One 6 Professional or Studio One Plus membership. Thank you for watching.